Hello, morning everybody. Thank you for hanging around. I uh, oops, just wanted to check how the audio is going. Can you hear me okay? And uh, let me know how the video feed is running as well. Got everything sort of zoomed in a little bit, but I can also uh, zoom out to show you a bit of my palette as well. So uh, yeah, let me know how you're going. Thank you all for coming along. This is like a bit of a different time that I usually do my streams. Normally I do them over the weekend, but I've got some time this morning and yeah, I, th I thought it'd be good to actually run, run through a quick, fun little beach scene. And, and I love doing these beach scenes. They're just great practice and they're, they're, uh, quite good for beginners as well, because you don't have all too many, bits and pieces to add in there like buildings and you know tiny little uh, details i mean you still have a little bit with with beaches but really you've got sky you've got some some land and a bit of water and i was thinking in this particular scene i just wanted to add in a few, you know a, a boathouse or something like that maybe a jetty going into the going into the water so i wanted to change this one up a little bit but uh, yeah Good to see you all. Thank you for, for coming along. For those of you who are new here, my name is Darren Yeo. I'm an artist over from Melbourne, Victoria. And yeah, I basically run these run these workshops each month and love painting, love teaching. So if you guys have any questions during today's workshop, just let me know in the chats. Uh, yeah, drop a message in the chats if you can hear me uh, all good as, as well. And if uh, I just, I've got all, got a few windows up. As usual, I'm getting slowly getting better at multitasking, but at times, you know, I'll be concentrating and I sort of will check up every now and then to see if there's any new chats. We've got um, Donna from Facebook, from Niagara Falls, Susan, hi Susan, we've got Anne and also Margaret. Are you going, Margaret? Good to see you can meet, uh, make it. And yeah, it's a different different sort of time slot, Margaret, but good to see some of you can still uh, could still make it. I just wanted to see if this might be a better better time for some of you. So, Luke, uh, Reza on um, the chat as well. Good to see you. Kelly, also. We've got Isabel asking, will the video be available later? Yep, it will be. So, yeah, let me know in the chats whereabouts you're from. Uh, feel free to, to talk amongst, uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, message each other in the chats and and also let me know what you'd like to get out of today's session as well, because sometimes, you know, I run these things pretty similar each time, but I do tweak them a little bit based on the feedback you guys give me. So, uh, for example, the last time someone was asking for me to go through my materials in a little bit more detail before I started. So I thought I'll, I'll actually do it for this session as well. Um, I do list the materials in the description of the video before I start. So you can actually go through and scroll right down to the bottom of the video and it has my basic materials, but I'll go through the ones I'll be using today. And um, the thing is, is that I, I try not to keep to any, you know, I'd keep too rigid in terms of my materials because for most of these things, you can substitute colors like yellows. You can substitute all different kinds of yellows, brushes. I've got a few different mop brushes and I've got some synthetic brushes and, you know, if you don't have one or the other, it's not going to be the end of the world. So that's why um, I try to keep the materials pretty general. And let's have a look. We've got also, whoops, uh, we've got, oh, we've got quite a few people here in the chat. And, and from Sydney, we've got Maureen from Devonport, Tassie, at our holiday away from Melbourne. Wow, and uh, Tassie's really good for painting. There's so many beautiful beautiful landscapes and scenes out there. You can bring your sketchbook out, Maureen, and, and uh, yeah, do some sketching and, and learn that way as well. I, I was in Tassie actually a couple months ago. Jeannie, how are you going, Jeannie? Good to see you from California. Um, got a few people on YouTube. Angie, Yvette, Pamela, Meredith, um, Georgie, Jitson, Linda. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for coming along. Um, got Penny Stowe as well. Some new new um, people, Richard, Harvey, good to see you, Richard, and Cindy, good to see you, Cindy. Um, Cindy's one of my my students as well. So, yeah, good, nice to see you on this live live session. So, guys, um, we'll probably get started soon. 
Um, got Keith as well, Keith Richardson. Thanks for joining, Keith. Look, for those of you who haven't been here before, I just thought I'd show you some of my work to, to give you an idea, a little rundown of the types of uh, scenes that I do. They're very, they're very loose sort of scenes. Those are a couple of beach scenes, but um, I try to, I try to um, prioritize efficiency, and still at the same time, get in a good sense, uh, you know, a sense of location, a sense of place, and a nice feeling. Uh, of a scene. I mean, if this one could almost be quite similar to the one that we're doing today, I was hoping to make it more, a little bit more detailed as well. You can see some of these I've done in pen and wash. They're from previous classes and they take between 30 minutes to hour and a half to do. Normally about an hour takes for me to, to put together, uh, put together these, these ones. Okay. And I'll go through today my process in terms of how I how I plan out a painting and how, uh, you know, the steps involved in, in painting the lights, the dark areas. Um, yeah, so the most important thing is having a bit of a vision before you start in terms of, hey, what do I want to get out of this? What do I want my painting to actually look like at the end of it? And have a general indication of what that is is in your mind. Like if you don't like the reference photo or if there's things you want to change up in the reference photo, that's something I always start thinking about before I even start painting. And and one of the ways I do that is actually through a little sketchbook. So before this session, I just had a bit of a scribble here on paper. And, you know, I thought that reference picture, yeah, it's good. It's got a lot of figures. What I liked about it was that there's tons of figures so that we can draw some inspiration from that. Not to say we're going to put all of them in, but I just thought the background was a little bit too uniform like the the mountain in the background i mean you can keep it that way but i thought maybe i could put a closer bit of headland here or something like that maybe some kind of beach house and also an umbrella i was scribbling in trying to figure out how to put this umbrella in where to put it in i could put it in here I could put it in here okay and uh yeah i noticed all my beach scenes have been pretty popular in the past and also for beginners, it's a f one of the best subjects that you can start out doing, okay? So let's go ahead. I'm going to get started now with the drawing. So the, um, oh, before I get started, actually, let me just talk a bit about the materials I'm using. So this is cotton, 100% cotton watercolor paper. So it's in medium texture. And yeah, basically, basically it's got a bit of a rough to textured, uh, you know, bit of texture on it. And I think this is best for landscape painting. I use cotton paper because it's very durable and it allows you to get in multiple washes and not disturb the previous washes. I find other types of paper can be tricky, can accidentally lift off previous layers. So here's some of my paints. And I mean, this is a bit of a mess at the moment, but I barely ever clean my palette. Um, let's go from, from this side. So I've got a bunch of yellows here. So there's actually three different yellows. Yellow ochre, I've got a bit of Oh, Cronacridone yellow and this is Hansa yellow. Over here I've got a bit of this color called, uh, what is it, buff titanium. So it's like an off-white color. Okay, I'm probably going to use a bit of that buff titanium, a bit of that off-white color, a bit of the yellow ochre. If you don't have those colors today, it's no big deal. Just use whatever yellows you have. I just try to dull it down. If you have a bit of white um, watercolor paint, mix that in with the yellow so it's not so... Um, yeah, it's not so bright and vibrant because the sand in this scene looks almost like this very, very light sort of sand. It's like off-white kind of color. You can see here, these are a few more of my warmer colors. I probably won't use these today, but that's like a couple of oranges, a quinacridone orange. This is a pyrrole orange, a pyrrole red. I've got a bit of cerulean blue, great for painting skies. I've also got these other colors here. It's, you don't need these lavender and turquoise. Um, yeah, I just like to have them here as my kind of lighter, cooler, lighter colors. But um, cerulean blue is good. If you don't have cerulean blue, um, ultramarine blue is also pretty good. Just water it down, make sure it's really light when you paint the sky. So, um, so really, if you've got a yellow, you've got a blue and you know, if red as well is good because you can mix all three of them together to create a pretty dark color. Okay, but all these other colors here, um, I mean, all these down the side are really purples and black or neutral tint. Okay, neutral tint is just a really dark color. Got some browns, couple of browns here, a burnt umber and a burnt sienna over here. Got some green, which we're not really going to use today, I think. Maybe a little bit in the background, but I'm probably just going to 
use a kind of greenish blue, more of a bluish color for some of those mountains in the background. So Angie's asking, using canvas paper, use rough or smooth side. I would say use the rough side. I'm not sure what canvas paper is. I haven't used it before, actually. Um, if you mean just normal watercolor paper, canvas paper. Yeah, uh, yeah. I reckon try the try the, try the rough side, Angie. Okay, and uh, fantastic. I'm just going through, have a look at the the chats. All right. I hope you guys are all ready. Um, Oops, I forgot to actually go through my brushes. Let me just show you some of the brushes I'll be using. So today I've actually got a bunch of, I mean, it's the same ones I use for all my demonstrations. A couple of these mop brushes, watercolor mop brushes here. So they have a sharp tip, but they hold a lot of water. And, you know, I tend to use the largest brush I can to paint in a lot of these washes. That way I'm not dabbing around too much in the same area, causing, uh, causing a bit of a mess. So... You know, these two brushes, maybe this one, that'd be like the largest mop brush that I'd use, maybe for the sky, maybe for a bit of the sand, okay? But this one, these two probably be good. And I do have a few other, just, you know, smaller brushes I use to make marks. Like, for example, these smaller synthetic brushes, I do have a small flat brush as well. Flat brush sometimes I use to get in just some of the details of the houses and things. These are synthetic brushes and so they don't hold much water at all, but you'll find that they you, you'll find that they're great for just getting in all little details and you can't get in small details with these brushes. They just hold too much water, make a mess. So smaller brush like that, even if you've just got a small round brush, for example, like this one, little round brush that's going to be perfect okay so yeah tend to work with some yeah even a couple of you know just these three if you've got something like that be completely fine okay right oh so let's get it started with the drawing and you know like you noticed before i actually went through and um i did some uh little sketches here on the left hand side and this helps to guide me in terms of the composition, okay, because often you don't find a reference photo that that really fits what you, you want. And they can look a bit dull at times unless you go and take them yourself and, you know, that kind of thing. It's it's tricky to find one. And I, you know, I was talking to, I was talking to, to one of my, my friends, Philippe, about this. And he was saying how, um, you know, he watches these, these sessions as well. And I say how long it takes me to actually find a reference photo sometimes it takes me longer than the actual painting itself. So, you know, in order to not waste too much time finding them, especially with this one, I just uploaded this one and thought I'll use this as a base reference. And then from there, from there, uh, change it up. So I've just drawn a line across the, uh, roughly about the center of the page, maybe a little bit further down from the center. Okay, this is gonna be the horizon line. So where the sky meets the, the ground or the, the sea. Okay, and you can see there's, uh, you know, there's a bit of water coming in uh, like this. Okay, I'm gonna make it sort of roughly come in like that. Okay, bit of water. Okay, um, good, good. And what we wanna do, I think we'll put in some of this headland out the back. I, th I thought I'd make a really, like a larger bit of headland here. Okay, something like that. But then in the background, get in some more uh, of these mountains or some, somewhere like that. Okay. So we might have a larger one here, just a bit of larger, I don't know, like a rock or something like that. Uh, like a cliff overhanging. Uh, let me just, let me just have a look, something like this. Okay. Make it come down a bit more. Okay. There we are. Okay. And with objects in the front of the scene, the, the trick is, is just to make them, just to make them a bit darker to help to imply that they are in the forefront, the foreground of the scene. Okay, that's one, one way to do it. Um, also, one thing to decide is whereabouts is the light source coming from. I, I reckon we could probably make the light source come from the right-hand side. Uh, yeah, it's not a not a huge deal at the moment, but we have to decide that later. So all this stuff in the background, these can just be those, you know, distant mountains. Don't make them too dark because um, that's just going to be a quick wash. Okay. Uh, Shnolan. How you doing, Shnolan? Good to see you. It's evening for you guys. What time is it for, for you? 
it's, it's yeah, it's like 11 a.m. for me. Angie's saying, love the drawing but can't see it. Do you want me to zoom in or something? Is that going to help? Is that better, Angie? I might lower the light as well. Something like that, okay? And, you know, with the drawing, it's just a plan. You don't want to go too dark. And you don't want to actually put in too many details as well, okay? Now, we did... I did talk about an umbrella, an umbrella, and I think I'll put the umbrella in later. Well, the, the one thing I want to do is, I don't know, get in some indication of like a, a beach house or something closer, closer to the front of the scene. Okay. I might actually put it, let's see if I can put it here, uh, like just a little house or something. I know it's not there, but. Okay, just start off with a bit of that triangular like roof like that. Yeah. Oops, let me just erase a bit of this in the center. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Come down like that. There. Bottom of the little house or whatever. <clears throat> the voice is a bit croaky this morning. Uh, yeah, just roughly around there. Put in a couple of windows or something like that on the side. Okay, at this at the moment, look, it's I'm just indicating roughly where it is, and then I can put in a bit of this, maybe like a bit of these uh, jetty or something going out into the water. Okay, like this simple, right? Real simple. Uh, okay. I'll make the water sort of come in a little bit further, uh, receding, recede back a little bit more. Otherwise, it's not going to make sense. So something like that. Okay. There. And yeah, whether I want to put another one, another sort of structure building or structure here, you know, Maybe just try that, something like this. There. Just a building facing uh, facing the viewer, maybe, like that. That could be a doorway or something there. Okay. Who knows? Good. Okay, so we have a couple of structures. A couple of smaller structures out there in the back. Okay. We can play around with them later. Uh, Let's put in some figures, and uh, I think why not we have why don't we have someone here so we can put the heads of the figures in. This is where you do it. So just around the horizon line here, okay. This is where I'd start to put in maybe a head of a figure, okay. Let's put in the body, you know, leg there. Oops, let me just make that a little bit, a little bit more. Rougher, okay, okay, there we go. Maybe just walking into the distance. Here's a person there. Um, have another person next to the just both walking, or maybe they're just uh, talking to each other or something like that. Okay, a couple of figures like that. And yeah, the big thing is just to get the heads in around that horizon line. So where we drew that line at the back, and that's going to make it look more uh, like a flat plane. Okay. And of course, you have some, sometimes you have little kids and their heads are really, uh, well, they're a bit larger than the body, but not just that, but they're, they're, they're going to be shorter than the adults here. Okay. So they could be just sort of standing, you know, child just sort of standing here in the water. Another one. Uh, here maybe, you know, just trying to, just trying to put in a indication of some figures that they may or may not, they may stay, they may not stay for later, but, um, I like to keep things a bit interesting. A couple of figures there. Maybe we can have a third one. Oh, where can we put the third one? A smaller figure here, just off in the distance. Okay. There. Like that. <clears throat> figure there off in the distance like that 
you know um this is where we might go back into that reference photo let's have a look at that reference photo and and think to ourselves you can zoom into it and find some of the people in there and use them as a bit of a, a reference like there's a there's a guy here looks like he's in some like a wetsuit or something let me have a look no he's not he's in he's in a He's in uh, just really dark clothing and he's standing sideways. Okay, let's see his shoulder kind of stick out like that. And that's the front of the other part of his shoulder. Okay, it's kind of like a boxy sort of build like this. And then you've got some shorts there and a couple of legs like this. Okay, there. And he seems to be holding on to some shoes or something like that. So, you know, just sort of pick out... Um, yeah, pick out some details that you want, some figures that you think look interesting. Might be good also to have some people like sitting down and especially because we're putting in some kind of umbrella here, I believe. Well, I think it will be good anyway. And let me just pencil in roughly where I put that umbrella and just kind of get it coming up like this. And um, let's have a look. Ooh, I'm also kind of deciding to myself... Do I wanna do I wanna actually get that umbrella coming through the mount not the mountains, but like, you know, these bits and pieces here as well? I think I'll put it around here. And so that way underneath I can just make it darker. So just where the this headline this this headland is. Okay. I'm gonna get that to intersect a little bit with this umbrella. Okay. It kind of just continues on around the back or whatever. Okay, just just uh, look tentatively penciling in in this umbrella shape like that. I don't have a reference for this, but you know, just make sure you're doing this kind of shape. I don't know this kind of umbrella-like shape uh, that, and then have these often these little um, flappy sort of bits underneath as well here. Yeah. Okay, this is a pretty big umbrella. Uh, I'm trying to intend for it to be that that big, actually. Yeah. Am I happy with it or not? Yeah, you, at these sort of points, you've got to decide for yourself uh, whether it works or not. I think I will, you know what, I'll just... I don't like erasing stuff. I'm not a fan of that. Um, if I don't have to do it, I won't. I reckon I will just leave it. I reckon I will just leave it. It does interact a bit with the background, but uh, <clears throat> I reckon we can just make it work anyhow. Okay. Good. And now that we've got this umbrella, you know, there's going to be some shadow maybe running to the left-hand side. Uh, you know, same with these houses, a bit of shadow to the left-hand side. But most importantly, I can now put some... Someone like sitting down here, just lying down, maybe there. Yeah, I'm just sitting there underneath the umbrella. Yeah. Okay. Look, it's no, it's it's not perfect, but it you know it looks like there's someone under there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Make that head a bit smaller. It was just a bit too big before. So there we go. We've got someone there under the umbrella. Sometimes you might have like a, <clears throat> I don't know, a box of something, you know, esky or uh, some food or whatever. Just put that in. Little objects. Uh, this can we do? <clears throat> you could put another person here behind. Also sort of sitting back as well and um, like a towel on the ground, just an indication of this towel, a towel or something here. Okay, that could be a towel. Uh, okay, now I want to put in, I don't know, maybe some shrubs or something here. This could be like a, I don't know, further up on a sand dune, I don't know. So just, I'm just going to scratch in a few little marks here, okay, just to remind myself to keep that in. So, I mean, so far we've added in quite a few little details. There's, there's from a small 
scene that doesn't really have all too much going on apart from the figures and uh you know the background mountains and things like that we we didn't have half of these things in here okay but you know it's important to challenge yourself and change things up but of course you can just use the reference picture on its own okay <clears throat> and Angie's saying, we want it to look raining or block sun from our eyes. Hmm. What, that must have been responding to something I said. I can't remember. Charles says, I'm passing on the umbrella. Yeah, pass on that. You don't need to put it in. You don't need to put the umbrella in there. Uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go with mine. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me just have a look. Who else have we got here? um let's have a look could have added some could have even added some horses uh curadium says yeah could have could have it's up to you really <clears throat> pardon me this i just have I'm trying to follow up on the chats yeah and narrator saying love a good beach scene they love your beach scenes narrator are we gonna do this one you're gonna do this one in in line and wash and genie good to see uh um sand can have sometimes a boring effect and when it's a light gray with with strong light that's even trickier yeah it can be yeah especially with these sort of scenes but when we add in some shadows for the figures i think that's really going to um bring out some extra detail before i forget i, I will put, add another figure here just some smaller ones floating around in the background do help to create a i don't know a better sense of a sense of uh depth okay another person here just floating around doing whatever off in the background there okay so we've got some smaller figures i think they kind of help with balance as well so you know i like to have uh yeah just make it look like there's people distributed around i mean i've done beach scenes where i just have one person in there as well one or two people it's no big deal uh, it's just what you want. And Anne's asked, can you please show reference photo? The, the reference photo is in the event in the event uh, discussions page. So if you go into the event, click the discussions tab, it will uh, it will be in there. Uh, let me just, I'll see if I can just add it on. Let me get, give me one moment. I'll see if I can just add it onto this scene in the corner, actually. Uh, sometimes it obscures obscures what i'm uh, trying to do so that's why i uh yeah that's why i sort of omit it sometimes but there you go that's the reference there in the corner um it's nearly 2 p.m curadium in the night nearly 2 p.m oh 2 a.m yeah that's that's pretty early my bedtime seems to be getting later and later these days so i used to sleep at 12 now i'm sleeping at one or or something like that so even two <laughs> I need to get to sleep earlier, but good, good that um, keeping entertained at this this hour. Uh, tiny figures give nice details. Yep, they do. And uh, Kate Parbury's here as well. That's all right, Kate. Uh, you can just join and, and follow along and do a quick little sketch as well. Okay, so just I think there's a, a question here. Cindy's asking, how do you gauge house sizes and positions? Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, it's a tricky one like it for, for me it take you know it took a bit of time to intuitively grasp it but as you can see if you get these houses out in the back right they're pretty you know if you, if you look at the figure next to the house or getting closer to the house like that one there okay that figure you know is getting smaller but as you get really close to the house and remember the doorway is roughly about this size sorry this height so a figure will not be any taller than that doorway generally speaking right so if you've got a figure that's a little bit you know approaching the house they can be bigger okay but generally speaking things will just get smaller as you go into the background if you do a gigantic house out the back it's just it's not going to look right and so with practice and, and time just sort of modifying the size of the figures the heads as you move closer to the foreground you get a much better grasp of how large now small to make to make things i don't get it right all the time you know even with the umbrella here i think the umbrella is probably a tiny tiny bit large I and mean, you do get beach umbrellas that 
that big anyway. But, you know, you don't want to make a, an umbrella like this size coming out there. That's going to be too big unless it's all the way in the foreground, yeah? So I hope that kind of answered your question. Okay. Um, let's let's go ahead. I I'm, hope you guys are doing okay with the drawing. Can you let me know if you have any questions about the drawing? Because I'm going to zoom back out now so that you can see a little bit of my a little bit of my palette here on the right hand side so do do some mixing and uh, yeah let me know how you're going with the drawing if you have any other further questions in in the chats just type me a, a quick message and while I get uh, just while I get ready with my paints okay and the drawing's important but don't don't, don't fixate too much on it. Use it. Remember, it's just a plan. When you're drawing for watercolors, it's different for when you're drawing for, um, I, well, I guess for the sake of just creating a detailed drawing because it's a finished product, whereas this is just a plan. But at the same time, um, it forms the basis of our painting. It, it's very crucial. And if you don't, I find anyway, if I don't do a drawing, my painting just doesn't turn out too great. Uh, because I, you know, I don't have a plan as to where all the colors are going. Some questions here. You've used a graphite pencil for the lines. Yep, just a normal mechanical pencil. And I use this one because it, I don't need to sharpen it. Mechanical pencils. I, th I use a thicker mechanical pencil as well. Angie's saying, my first time here, I messed up on my umbrella and have bigger difference between mountains and, and people. That's okay, Angie. Just give it a go. Just give it a go. And, you know, e even if the proportions are not exactly correct, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to get some good practice in terms of the washes, understanding the whole process. So remember, this is just a, a you know, an hour or so that I'm going to be, or well, excuse me, 40 minutes, but hour and a half sessions. So, yeah, it, it's just to help you understand the entire process, run through it uh, and understand that you can never get it. You can never get it right the first time round. And I still, I still stuff up all the time. It's part of, part of painting and um, learning from it. So righto, I am picking up some water and I'm just putting a bit of water here. Okay, you can see. Now this first wash is really important because we want it to basically be um, uh, mostly just water, okay? So what I'll do actually first, let's put in the sky. I'm going to get a bit of cerulean blue, okay, a bit of cerulean blue. And, uh, you know, I tend to mix this up on the palette, but I don't have enough. I haven't cleaned my palette so well today, which isn't the best, but I can just get an, a nice cerulean blue in the sky and... In terms of proportions, this is about 10% paint, okay? You're talking about really, really light colors here in the sky because we, for me anyway, in this particular scene, I want, it, I want to indicate a nice sunny day, bright sunny day, okay? So having, having the sky really light is going to help with that, okay? And I tend to... Just use the same brush, bring that wash down, okay? I can pick paint right off the palette, but you don't, when you're starting out painting, it's probably best for you to just mix it on the palette like this. Um, that's best practice anyway, I, I do that most of the time. Okay, so just a nice little flat wash like that. And flat wash is just using the same color. My voice is going croaky. Oops, my voice is going a bit croaky. I might mute myself while I clear my throat. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Just a bit of that coming down there. Soft looking sky. Lovely soft looking sky like that. Great. Okay. The water is actually like a bit darker. Water's a bit darker. But um, what I want to do is get in some colors for the background, uh, these mountains and stuff like that, these, this bit of headland. I'm gonna use some yellow. This is just a light bit of yellow ochre, okay? I want some warmth back there, like that, okay? 
And, uh, you know, we do have some buildings, buildings and things uh, around here as well. Uh, am I thinking whether I should just leave the, the rooftops white? Yeah, we could do so. Could do so. Cut around. Come down like that. So look at how light I'm going. It's still that same really light kind of color. Okay, this is kind of a, the tricky bit here, and really just deciding what, how to. I'll make the headlight headland come down actually around about here, and then kind of blend into those mountains back into the distance. So we've got kind of the, the sky still underneath here, underneath this umbrella a little. Okay, there we are. Just thought I'd add in a bit stronger blue there, and. Let's continue. Let's continue on. Okay. I'll just, you know, I'm going with a bit of yellow here. But in the far distance, I reckon what would be good is just a bit of, bit of bluish color. I've got some blue, ultramarine blue here. And I will drop this in to these background mountains and stuff. A bit of ultramarine blue. And remember this, the paint is still wet in the sky. So what's going to happen when you do this is that it's going to, some of it anyway, it's going to melt into the sky and touch. But that's fine. We leave a soft edge there. And uh, that will just help to bring it, push it back further so that it doesn't look too close to the front of the scene. Okay. So that's it. Just a quick little impression out the back of those. I uh, don't know what they are mounts or whatever there. Okay, we can of course tidy it up, touch like this, okay. And then we've got the water, and the water, I am going to be using a bit of that sky color, cerulean blue, just mixed in with ultramarine, okay, so that it kind of hopefully appears a little more lighter, okay. Let's have a look, okay. We really kind of got one chance to do this, so I, I'm going through here like that, I think often the fastest, the faster you do it, um, I mean, given that you're still, you know, taking a little bit of care, and you've also got this, you see in the water, there are some areas that are white. So you want to leave some of these white areas running through the water as well. Can you see that? All right. Yeah. And the water just comes all the way to the front. Just, just um, be sporadic with this stuff uh, that the water does it come in here roughly here maybe you know so leaving bits of white here as well on the paper can help All right like this All right uh, good and I am going to do something now where we'll just blend we're just going to blend in some of this water okay so you can see here all this water these sort of cooler colors here. We're going to blend it in with some of this sandy color. So let's mix up a bit of this white. I've just got a bit of this buff titanium color. Okay. Buff titanium. And I'm going to go in and just drop that buff titanium color in here. And let's pray and hope that this will mix together nicely. It normally does. Okay. And you get some sandy kind of mix. And sometimes if you if you don't, if you think that it's not warm enough, you can also check that out. So yeah, just added in a little bit of warmth in there, a little bit of yellow ochre. Okay. And all these colors that I'm adding in here, especially with the yellows and the warmer section of the bottom part, it's it's mostly just water, you have to remember. It looks really weak, and at this point you might think to yourself, you know, what is he doing? It's just you know, it looks too weak, but we don't have the shadows in yet. Once we get the shadows in, it's really going to start making sense. So just little bits of cutting around the figures because I want to get in some, you know, some different colors on the figures and stuff like that as well. Um, I'm still tossing up between the rooftop of that building. I, I reckon I might put in some, um, I reckon I might actually put in a bit of burnt sienna for the rooftops instead, just a light light wash of burnt sienna okay which is a kind of a light brown color okay just decided that then uh there we go and i'm just cutting around 
Okay, you don't have to rush this. Probably the, the bit, the only bit that has a sense of that you need to do quicker is here, just where the, the water meets the sand. Because once that water starts to dry off, it's difficult to get it to blend in with the sand and look natural. So I, I find ways to just blend everything together, but still create some sharp edges and areas of definition. Okay, because otherwise, look, you have to you have to strike up a balance. At the end of the day, you have to make sure that things connect, but then um, other things remain separate as well. So, for example, the figures. So I've left some of them white, and it's basically your first wash. I think, yeah, just looking through and what should we do? What color should we make the umbrella? Oh, it's a tough one. I think I'll just go like a red color or something. But firstly, let's get in a bit of burnt sienna, touch of burnt sienna for this, the rooftop of this yeah, building near the back. I hope this is burnt sienna, jeez. I sometimes pick up the wrong color and... <laughs> okay, there we go. I'm like a warmer rooftop sort of color. And hopefully this will blend a little bit in with the background. Okay, I'm gonna leave the bottom part of it white. Okay, really light sort of wash, as you can see. Look at that, simple. Just drag that across there. All right, good. Good, good, good. Um, let me just check the questions. We've got questions here. Angie's saying, is that yellow ochre or sienna? That, that's um, burnt sienna, but very, very light. I've watered that down. I've watered that down significantly, so it's about 10% water. Great. And yeah, it's good to, it, you know, the Angie, you know, drawing is definitely something that a lot of people don't think about when they're painting, um, learning how to come up with a, yeah, just, just come up with a, an accurate drawing. And often it's understated how important it is. I've got this little spray bottle and I like using this spray bottle because it just allows me to uh, re-wet some sections. And why am I doing this? Uh, I want to flick in a bit of paint in here. Okay, just a bit of, I've got some browns and things like that. Okay, and I'm hoping this will just create some tiny little, uh, tiny little bits and pieces here in the, in the sand, some small little, you know, you can see this like seaweed and things like that here as well. It's like a green, what is it? Like a greenish brown, isn't it? So we can just pick up a bit of green and brown or something and just uh, feather a bit of this in. This is a top, this is just a little brush that I have, a, a little watercolor fan brush. Okay, you can use any kind of brush that works for you just to achieve this same kind of effect, okay? Um, and because of that the paper is still wet, this will blend in nicely so that you don't get too many sharp edges um, in this sort of mix. Okay, but I did want to make some, yeah, create an indication of some like sharper looking, uh, yeah, just sharper looking branches and things like that here. Not branches, but it's a grass. Okay, feather that in and make sure it's soft. And the way you do that is, like I said, making sure that that previous wash is still wet. Okay. So that is, that, that's going okay. It's going okay. Uh, maybe some more tapping on the paper. A bit more of this stuff. Let me see. Can I just flick in, flick in a bit more of this paint? Yep, there we go. Just uh, flick in a bit of this stuff. I have to be careful not to overdo it as well. I always tend to go overboard with this. Okay. And this could be, I don't know, bits of seaweed or stuff. Yeah. Um, a bit darker here. Yep. And all this stuff kind of just dries off afterwards anyway. Um, good. So I don't want to overdo it. We'll leave it like that. Um, and while I'm here, I thought, why not just, again... 
decide what color umbrella one up there and I'm thinking to myself something like warmer yeah like a red color this is probably going to turn out pink yeah, it's probably going to turn out kind of pinkish color even purple or something um okay well looks like it's looks like it's going to be pink don't have a there let's have a look and and you know you're making this also pretty light okay and this umbrella because it's in direct contact with the sun light okay here we are it's probably going to blend a bit into the sky as well but that's okay look at that so essentially what we've done is that we put on our first layer of colors yeah we're not detailing really to any extent we're just putting in all the lights of the scene okay i think over here this towel i'll put in a few little i don't know a few little streaks of blue or something um, and if you guys are enjoying this, if you if you're watching along and you're enjoying this this workshop, please consider sharing it with a friend if you think it might be beneficial for them as well. It really helps me out to get these videos to to more people, and uh, yeah, I would love to see more more people attending attending these uh, sessions as well. So yeah, look, I'm just trying to put in a bit of. I don't know what I'm doing, what I'm doing here. This just like this towel. I don't know. Indicate a bit of detail on the towel, I guess. Okay. Um. Yeah. There we are. Um. I'll put in some bit of bit of color for the figures. Use all kinds of skin tones. Up to you. I usually use a, a blend of brown, a bit of red, and a bit of yellow. Okay, and especially with these ones, these figures kind of just walking around in the background like that. Uh, I'll just, I'll just use the same color and quickly do this while I'm here, bit their legs as well. So this all sort of, get this all done while, oops, too red. And I'm gonna dilute this down. Remember to dilute down these colors, otherwise you can get, uh, get can, can be a bit too overpowering at times. Okay, there, you know, there, just a bit of color for the figures, indicating their arms and their legs. Yeah. Um, might have people, you know, their shirts off and stuff, you know. Yeah, like that. Just dab on a bit of color for the heads. These two just sitting here, enjoying that shade. Another thing I have to decide on as well, just the the uh, direction of the shadow on the ground. I reckon I'll probably get the shadow coming coming over to the left hand side. Might look better um, because the figures here can cast shadows to the left as well. Okay, look at that. Just a little bit of feathering in of these details. Bit of the uh, bit of these pink and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's put in a bit more here. Um, a couple of figures here. Just using some bit bit darker sort of color here. Okay. Good. Okay. This is just a little. It's just a little, uh, little flat brush, nothing. Yep. And put the clothes on them later. Good, good. Uh, okay. Um, red umbrella would be nice. Yep. That does. Yeah, it looks decent, doesn't it? Yvette, it's going to turn pinkish, but see how it's all blended roughly together. So it looks, I don't know, it's all, all, always one. Okay. Uh, I found umber not sienna it's mixing with yellow ochre and from blue fantastic okay let me just have a look 
Let me just have a look and see if there's any other questions. How are you guys going? Because this is the first wash pretty much done. So if you have any questions, let me know. Let, let me know now and I will uh, answer your questions for you. Otherwise, we're probably going to get started and continue on to the next uh, part of the, the scene and, and dry and uh, dry things uh, dry things off. Okay. Um, should be a color I thought I'd add in for these figures here. Donna is saying lost the feed. Cool. Uh, looks like the stream's going okay for me. Can you guys, um, is anyone else having any issues? Are we all good? Hopefully. Hopefully we are all good. Um, looks fine for me. In my end, maybe you like refresh it. If you're having trouble, sometimes it freezes up or whatever, just refresh it. Okay. So yeah, if you have any questions or anything, just drop them in the chat. So I'm going to dry this off now and uh, get back to your... Okay, all dried off, all dried off now, and we're ready to get started again. Okay, so let's, let's get cracking. Um, yeah, I, the the feed on the feed on YouTube is normally a lot better. I don't know why on Facebook I have just had a lot of issues since the beginning streaming on here. So. You can always join the YouTube stream if you are having troubles uh, on Facebook. Okay. Um, otherwise, you can refresh it. I changed the settings to supposedly make it a bit more stable. But uh, yeah. Okay. So we want to now get in the, all the shadows and. Let's uh, firstly figure out what we're going to do. I think we're going to put in some shadows for. Oh, let's let's mix up a shadow color. So I've got some neutral tint. You can use just neutral tint on its own, um, or you can just mix in a bit of your a bit of your three primaries together. So red, blue, and yellow. <laughs> red, blue, and yellow. Mix them together to create a darker sort of color, and. These dark colors are going to bring out the shadows and make your painting, uh, it's gonna make a bit more sense once you have these in, okay? So even though I'm mixing up this dark color, and it looks pretty dark, right? But it's still about 50% paint and 50% water. Um, at the end of the day, when you're using such a dark paint, especially on really light backgrounds and, and uh, areas like this, you don't really need much to to get in a sense of shadow. So, um, you know, let's just go for it. I We have this figure here. I thought, oh, let's just put in some, some of the legs. Okay, I've got a, this is just a little flat brush and I'm using the edge of it to 
to get in some details. Okay, just the little details of the legs here. There, there's a leg here, another leg here to the left. Okay, like that. Um, good. Normally on the left-hand side of these figures, you might have a bit of shadow or something. Okay, just bring the legs down into the ground like that. Okay. There. And a uh, bit of the shadow. I'm going to make the shadow come off on a little tangent, like, uh, sorry, as in a little bit of an angle to the to the uh, to the front of the scene. So going to the left, but slightly on a bit of an angle, like as you can see here. This is the I don't know, like a little box or something like that here on the ground. Okay, look at that. Just a little touch of color on the legs. This will help to anchor the figures a bit to the ground. Um, even this one here. Look at that. That figure off there. So these are a couple of kids maybe playing around there in the water. Um, no, not much of a shadow there for these. This this one there, but you know, just a tiny little indication there. And you can also sort of maybe indicate the arm outstretched. They're playing, you know, throwing a ball to each other or something like that. Okay. Of course, we've got these figures off in the back and getting tricky to use this little brush, but I try to use the biggest brush I can when I'm putting in these figures. It just, uh, you know, the worst thing you can do is to fiddle around too much and suddenly end up with the, uh, with the mess, but uh, yeah, look, I'm using a little flat br uh, round brush here as well. I think I can justify that these figures are too small out in the back to really play around with. Uh, connect the legs up again. The shadows must go in the same run in the same direction. Yeah, the shadows are what's uh, what's going to bring this all together. The dark areas, so you you want to. You want to make sure you've got enough dark areas in here, okay? All right, but I also don't want to overdo it. I think I've kind of done something funny with that figure, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, here is this umbrella, this thing we are trying to decide before. Um, let me firstly get in a bit of a shadow underneath this. See underneath this rooftop, you often get a bit of a shadow underneath there, so. Uh, the sort of bright sunlight so I'm just gonna darken there a little okay and just carry this just carry a nice little slither of light or whatever underneath that rooftop maybe a bit here a little bit like that it's not much yeah it's really not much and but we have to be consistent with the light source here as well a bit of darkness underneath that rooftop there. Hopefully this is also going to bring out the white of the scene. Uh, sorry, the light of the uh, of the house, the, the white light area. What am I trying to say? You know, I still suck at multitasking when I'm painting. <laughs> and most other things. Okay. There we are. Good, good, good. So look at that little bit of light. Okay. And, and bear in mind, we haven't got in this headland as well. Bit of the shadow and stuff of the headland. But let's put in here. Let's put in here this umbrella. Okay. Just bring this down, this umbrella. Just drop in the stem of it. Okay. Go all the way down. There we go. All right. That's the umbrella stem. And you're going to also find underneath the umbrella, maybe some bits of darkness, little bits of shadow. Okay. The light source is coming. I mean, it's coming from the top, uh, top right hand side. Okay. You can get a bit of this shadow underneath like that, the umbrella like that. Okay. Uh, just, so I'm trying to simplify this down. Okay, good. Maybe we can get in some of these. Oops, too much. Let me just soften this off. Touch. Uh, just thought I'd put in a little bit of color up there as well in the, the top part of the umbrella. 
we get in a bit of gray or something. Okay. Mm, tissue paper. Tissue paper helps. Just to lift off some paint sometimes when you go overboard. Um, of course, you've got this background as well. This really, you know, I did think about this before, but I'm going darker into the background and also thought I'd add in a bit of green. Okay, so we've got something like a greenish black color or whatever. And uh, why am I doing this? Well, I want to make sure these houses stick out a bit more. Okay, so let's go in and just do this cutting around the roof. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That. Okay. Uh, I'm also really wanting to dry brush some parts so that we've got, I don't know, just a bit of bit of that yellow showing through as well. So it's not all too harsh looking. Okay. A bit more brown. You know, I, I'm always modulating these colors, changing these colors up as I go so that they look more interesting. Okay. There we are, look. Cut around this house rooftop. Okay. I like that sort of orangey uh, burnt sienna color there, so I want to preserve that. Okay. Normally I paint pretty, uh, pre pre pretty quick, but I'm doing this slower today. Um, so that one you guys can follow along in too, because I also want to just. Um, I just feel like I want to detail a bit today, which is unusual. Okay. More brown and stuff up the top there. Brown and yellows. Okay, look, just darker colors up here. And the, the reason why, again, like I said, is to I want to create some contrast around these houses and, and the umbrellas as well. I'm not done with the houses yet as well. There's just some darker bits I can put in the water for the, for the uh, jetty or whatever. Okay, look at that, just cutting around the rooftop. And you've got to be careful with this because you only got one. You got one go at this, really. Okay. There you are. And I think I'll just soften it down around here so that it's not, it just becomes lighter. All right. I mean, the main goal for this really for, for me was just to get a bit of contrast out of those houses in the background. All right. Yeah. Let's put in a bit more here. And a bit more yellow or something. A bit more yellow. Yellow and brown. There we are. Look at that. Drop that in. So can you see how that's starting to sort of take take um take form? It's looking kind of like a full scene now. Let's just start putting in, while I'm here, maybe a little bit of detail for the windows or something, that, that, that these little, tiny little bits on the house. Uh, you know, that, that could be a door or something, doorway there. There could be a doorway. You know, another thing you have to you realize is that at the base of the buildings there's often a little shadow so um, the sunlight's coming from that right hand side here so you're going to get a bit of like this gray whatever here in the ground okay run towards the left like this just simplify this shadow down i don't want it to be too dark off in the back okay but i do want the light source to be portrayed accurately whoops um, preserving that white on there was pretty pretty tricky. Have a, have a lot of self-control with that. 
And okay, what I've what I've not done is the shadow for this uh, umbrella. And uh, this is tricky because we've got we've got this figure here, obviously. So I will have to just wing this. Look, just the shadow of that umbrella coming through like that. Does it disappear off? Or we let it go? Yeah, maybe just something like that. Simplified it, simplify it down a touch. Um, okay. Shadows of the figures as well. Probably haven't done these ones too well, the figures, but I can um, try to bring them back later with some gouache. Um, good. These towels as well, like often they'll have a little, maybe a little bit of detail in them, like that. And you know, we've also got, not to forget, that these uh, little shrubs and stuff that we would, you know, that I was uh, putting in before, why not just get in a few little more uh, things running through here? Okay. Okay. Uh, Dropping a few here. Good, good. Um, how are we all doing? How are we all doing? I'm just having a look and see. Uh, just having a look and see uh, if there's any questions. So if you notice the video is a bit, bit fuzzy, what you can do is go into the, the settings tab, bottom right hand corner of the video, click that and then click 720p and that will um, give you a much more detailed image. Sometimes Facebook will, depending on your internet connection, will uh, present a lower quality feed, but you can change it. Okay, Anne says she's going well. Loretta's going well. Okay, and what have we got here? Serena, good to see Serena from Greenmount. Only just started watching. Awesome. Uh, and how you doing, Keith? I can see you, Keith. And good, good, good. Yeah. So Yvette's saying, yeah, this is basically negative painting. So we're cutting around the the shapes of the, uh, yeah, the shapes of the buildings in order to 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 bring out the detail in it. Okay. Uh, alrighty, alrighty. So, yeah, like I was doing before, just kind of quick bits and pieces here for the seaweed, um, and things in the in the ground. Let me just pick up, just pick up some paint, any sort of paint really, like that, and just go through. You know, on the beach as well, you do get these see these little kind of bits of seaweed and things up on the on the ground, so you can go in and add in things like that you can even just make up rocks you know see with these little white highlights you can just go over the top of uh, the left hand side of the rock or whatever and just create what looks to be a tiny uh, shadow or something to the left like that okay it's all just indication and as a whole when you look at the when you look at the scene afterwards, you should be able to discern what it's about. Okay, as we get into the foreground, I also tend to try to darken things a, a touch. I mean, we're, we're pretty much, we're almost done anyway. Okay, this is just some darker color. Yeah, being careful not to completely get rid of all this other stuff running through the water and that. Okay. Okay. There's just a bit of this uh, grass growing here. Just a tiny bit of that grass I thought I'd put in here. Um, good. Might. Be worthwhile me just uh, putting in a bit more detail for this umbrella. Um, 
bit of darkness running through it at the base here. Okay. I mean, really, you were just now figuring out some finishing touches, little bits and pieces to bring it all together. You know, you can put on some hair for the figures as well. You know, just drop on a bit of color like that. Make them look more like people. And uh, you know, where you put their hair as well helps to indicate what direction these people are facing. So, you know, got the hair of this person kind of there. So these two people look like they're kind of talking to each other. Yeah, kind of, right? Uh, they're talking to each other. Um, oops. We've got this one here, maybe a little bit of, little bit of hair. Oops, a bit too much, but doesn't matter. Dab that through. I really like using this flat brush, but I go overboard at times because you just want a quick little something. You know, a little bit of something there. Okay. You'd be surprised how just a little, few little, few little darker lines and points here and there will suddenly just bring out, bring out what your scene is. And um, another thing I again I forgot to do is near the water. You'll notice, you know, I, I had planned to put in some kind of jetty or whatever going into the water, so. Let's, I don't know, let me just try do this. I don't know if it's going to work out or not, but we can try. Okay. Out from the background here. A um, little bit of something here. This is, I also think this might help to bring out the figures a touch. Okay. Just bring this through. To where the water is and uh, you know, have some of these little things sticking out of the water. Okay, I mean it's not perfect but it's a little indication and it helps to create a bit of contrast so that the figures stick out more. Okay. Just doing my best to contrast, create a little more contrast in areas underneath the rooftops, these little these little windows here, for example, here, the doorway here. Um, oops, something like that. Okay. Uh, Let's put in some birds. I'm going to grab a bit of just some random color here in the page and we'll put in some little tiny little sh V looking shapes in the sky like that. Just birds flying through the scene like that. Okay. Some just make sure that the, the wings are not joined. Just create a few of these here and there because uh, it is a beach scene after all okay when you get the hang of this um, I've done it slower today but when you get the hang of doing these little beach scenes you can pump them out really quickly you can do them in like half an hour and they make great little gifts or just you know paintings in general exercises that you can do as well um, because I find beach scenes just tend to be yeah a lot a lot more straightforward you know of course I've complicated things as I as, I, as I'm known to do at times with uh, with my references but for the most part you don't need to do that you can just make it simple you can put in one person put in one figure you can uh, can get rid of those houses but the 
you know, the good thing is that you've got some, uh, got some practice in getting in some of these other bits and pieces. I mean, if you can do a beach scene with all these things going on in here, it's going to be easy for you to do one with just one person. I'm just trying to you notice what I'm trying to do here, really. I'm just trying to blend this this little white edged line away a touch. I did, I liked it in the beginning, but I found it to be now just too jarring. It's getting in on my nerves a bit with the just creating too much contrast back there. Okay. Okay. So we are almost done. The last step is getting in a bit of gouache, a tiny bit of gouache, which is going to help with, with, um, yeah, just bring out some final highlights. Okay. Good. Uh, good to hear Keith and you bet saying looks great already. Thank you. And uh, Pamela says looking, uh, it's looking good. Jeez, guys. Um, I hope, yeah, let, let me know how you're going. If you're, uh, if you need any more help or you've got some questions. Okay, we've been streaming for about one, about just, just over an hour now. And let's pick up some of this white gouache. Okay, straight from the palette. Maybe with a bit of water added in there. It's just a bit too sticky at the moment for me to use it. Um, just going to go on. Okay, wipe that off. Let's have a look. What can we do? We emphasize the water a bit, just some more water. Um, dry that off quickly, just a bit of, I just wanna make some more waves. These waves kind of come in more like that. And, and, yep, a bit of, a little bit of white here as well on the ground. Um, good. Um, touch of gouache maybe on the head and the shoulders of some of these figures like here, 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 okay, just to bring out some quick highlights. There. An umbrella even, maybe a touch up here. Okay. And the, the gouache is just a bonus thing I do at the end to put in a little bit of extra detail, a little bit of extra highlight. Um, never rely on it. Your painting should do most of the work to tell the, the story in terms of the light. Um, you know, like these little houses and things like that here, you know, a little dot of gouache in parts of it, uh, surprisingly helped to, help to bring out some details. Okay. Um, it can start looking too busy and I've been falling victim to this. Quite a few times of just putting too much in. Okay, there's a quick little, you know, quick little scene like this, and you can tell. I think I, I can tell anyway, roughly what is going on in here. I mean, as you can see, let's, let's see if I can put in maybe a little, if I can do a little reflection for these figures here in the water, something like downward reflection with the white. But, yeah. Okay. Now this figure looks a bit too, it's a bit too uh, light. Just darken the darken the figure a bit. Okay. Fantastic. Let's remove the tape and see what we are dealing with. My favorite part of the scene of painting, anyway. Just removing that paper and um, seeing what we've got. I mean, this has been one hour of painting yeah about an hour of painting and you know it doesn't take long it doesn't take long to create a simple but beautiful looking scene and you don't have to go stress and paint for days to to come up with something so here here it is and uh 
Let me zoom in so you can see a little bit more. Maybe I'll turn on this light touch as well, like that. Okay, so you can just see a bit more of the detail of what we have gone through today. I'm going to go through the questions now and uh, make sure I uh, make sure that you guys are do doing okay. Serena says, looks great. Darren, thank you, Serena. Cookie says, enjoyed it. Um, and Judith, I think you you say you're saying bravo. Thank you. And Keith is asking, can I scrape instead of gouache? Yes, you can scrape. So if you've got a, um, you know, I carry a little pocket knife with me. And when it's dry, you can just actually scratch off the paint and get access to those lighter sort of um, highlights in there as well, Keith. And yeah, guys, if you're watching along and you've enjoyed this session, um, yeah, do consider sharing this with a friend that might benefit from it. And yeah, this really helps helps me out as well. Just get this out to more people. Um, yeah, if you found if you found you uh, enjoyed and you got some good value out of this session as well, I do have a whole bunch of courses available. If you check in the video description, I've got access. Uh, put the link to my Patreon in there, as well as some of my other courses that I've got available. Recently, I just released a new one on urban landscapes mastering urban landscapes so I'll, I'll actually run through a quick little quick little um, demo to show you what's in there as well and uh, aaron mason says the thanks thank you aaron thanks for coming along i don't think i've seen you i don't think i've seen you before aaron but uh welcome and oh it's quite a, let me just check uh, have a look at what else what other comments margaret says love it well done i kept up <laughs> Good to hear. I, I do tend to paint pretty quick at times. Actually, today feels a lot quicker, but because I chose a more simpler scene, I think it's made things easier for you guys as well. So Wendy says, I'll do some more. Great, thank you. I'll do some more in Skillshare. Awesome. And Kyung says, thank you for your lesson. Thank you for coming along. Um, now I'm going to talk about a couple of my of my courses but i just want to make sure that there's everyone's here still uh beach scenes are relaxing looks uh they are beach scenes are great yvette they're my favorite ones to do you don't um just the subject matter itself you feel calm and in terms of like the the, the amount of effort you're putting in like it's not too you know you're not doing multiple buildings too many things going on you know you've only just focusing on sky and land so you know, I, th I find they're just, they're the perfect, perfect sort of, uh, perfect subject for beginners. Um, does anyone have any other comments or let me know how you found the session today? Did you, was I, uh, was it, was I explaining things clearly? Uh, is there anything I could do better for next time as well? Let me know. And I... Yeah, because I'd love to hear, love to hear these sort of things, these sort of feedback. Uh, you, you know, sometimes people get a bit worried to give feedback. I'm not sure how I'm going to take it or whatever. You know, I take all kinds of feedback well. So constructive feedback, you know, uh, positive feedback. You know, for me, I just want to learn and make sure that I'm providing you guys you know, good value for your for your time. You know, you spent uh, spent your morning here, so. Let me have a look. Um, Serena's asking, what is the best paper for watercolor painting? Serena, the best paper in my opinion is 100% watercolor, 100% cotton watercolor paper and using the medium textured or cold pressed paper tends to work for most subjects, even portraits. Yeah, so the reason why I say cotton watercolor paper is that you're just going to have a much easier time layering all the techniques, all the wet and wet techniques are going to perform correctly. When you're using other types of paper that maybe aren't that, uh, you know, not made of cotton or cellulose paper, you have to be more skilled, in my opinion, to use it because there's limitations. So you got to work within the limitations of the paper drying's very quickly for one and lifting up previous layers. So you have to paint more efficiently. You have to know what you're doing. Mistakes are harder to correct. So when you're using proper cotton watercolor paper, you're giving yourself the best opportunity, the best chance to actually um, succeed. So 
I want to just show you uh, while you guys are waiting for some more questions, I just want to quickly show you. And everything you need to know about how to paint urban landscapes in watercolour. Urban landscapes are a fascinating and unique subject that combine a number of smaller subjects including people, buildings and nature. Creating a sense of place is important, but being able to tell a story and compose a powerful emotive painting is a skill that will take your urban landscapes to the next level. This course will show you not only how to paint the featured scenes, but how to transform any photograph into an urban landscape. There are seemingly many different techniques and processes involved when painting an urban landscape. As a beginner, it's difficult to know how to even start. I hold your hand and take you through my entire process from start to finish, beginning with the initial planning process. In the Theory and Exercises module, I'll show you how to identify and compose a scene in your mind before you even start drawing. It's important to select an appropriate subject that will translate over to a rich and interesting painting. I talk about what elements to look for, how to sketch, how to identify light and shadow. Next, we'll go through all the essential watercolour techniques required to paint an urban landscape, as well as the crucial topics. Of In this module, you also have many opportunities to practice watercolour theory and techniques by completing simple painting studies together. In the second module, Urban Landscape Elements, sort of waiting, because I know some of you probably haven't seen it before going through in a kind of a different time doing these lives in a different time especially in the next few weeks i thought i'd i'd run uh yeah i'd run some more of these because i have yeah just have a bit, bit of extra time these days and uh let's have a look at the chats and keith says well done i feel comfortable with waves now yeah the waves you you, for, you know for the most part leaving the white of the paper there and if you can't leave the white of the paper there urban landscapes are an interesting and rich subject full of life the perfect subject for a watercolor painting so, in this class I just we'll be painting to, a detailed yeah, scene of venice from the grand canal using a variety of wet and wet techniques and wet in dry so techniques the, the, the we'll start from the ground up and learn how to compose plan uh, and draw your landscape yeah, scene in pencil first We'll go through how to emphasize and omit areas in your reference photo to create a more interesting and unique painting. In this scene, we'll use wet and wet techniques to paint the colors and soft details in the first wash. This can be a challenge for beginners, but don't worry, I'm going to show you how to time your brush strokes to create soft, blended washes to apply light. You learn how to gain control and layer effectively to create a loose, atmospheric scene. It's easier than you think. Creating fine, sharp details are just as crucial when painting urban landscapes. It creates shadows, contrast, and interest. But understanding when to add them in is crucial. I'm excited to get started, so join me in this class. You'll be painting this beautiful scene of Venice in no time at all.
And, you know, again, I've left, left a bunch of links in the description if you want to check out, again, my Patreon or some of my courses. Um, probably do another session. I'll probably do another live session, I don't know, next week or the week after. We'll see how we go. Um, but until then, till then, um, have a great, great uh, start of the week. And uh, I'll see you then. See you next time. Take care.